uh, one subject to caution. It's subject to caution in the sense that most people are not. Yeah. But the knowledge today is readily available. Yes. For you know, it was not before, or the combination of extreme uh, acuity in uh, Fraser and total blindness. Mm. The idea that it was a purely archaic phenomenon was another way of scapegoating, scapegoating itself. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And the, the way Fraser was rejected, mm. there is something wrong about that. There is something that proves that people sense there was something dangerous, you know, mm. for a whole edifice of uh, nationalism and so on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's very symbolic of anthropology too, oh yeah, yeah, sorry, that uh, Fraser would do that with archaic culture being himself a great anthropologist. Yes, yes. So you can say early anthropology is a continuation of the scapegoat mechanism uh -huh. within a, a threatening knowledge, you know, which yes. is unstable. Yes. Which is unstable yes. and it, which it tries to stabilize. Yes. Then <coughs> immediately after Fraser, what everybody said about Fraser you see, a great anthropologist, but his business of scapegoating is such nonsense and should be expelled from anthropology immediately. Uh -huh. And you could collect quotes there that would be absolutely marvelous yeah. for well, their ironic content. You know. so I think what's happening with my anthropology is a reversal of that, of Fraser. Right. And at the same time, you cannot condemn Fraser because Fraser will tell you things that no one had said before. He's yes. the first one to use yes. scapegoat in a great way. Yeah. Mm. Your, your theory really uh, is also a theory of human moral obliquity, isn't it? The fact yes. that we're never entirely lucid about entirely. ourselves, morally speaking. Or if we discover something dangerous, we Oblique. shelter ourselves. Yes, we, we take the refuge, you know, we go away, is we regressive. offload it. Sure. Uh, because Fraser has become, in a way, the archetypal figure of the self-satisfied uh, yes, anthropologist, the Westerner, who looks down at the... Yes. It's true, but at the same time, look what he did. I mean, when he, the way yes. he used the word scapegoat. Yes. Yeah. No, that's, that's and in a way, the two things are related. One got rid of Fraser mm. with his worst aspects, expelling the best with the worst. Uh -huh. What Christ is aware of is that by understanding the scapegoat phenomenon, it cannot remain the basis of society. Mm -hmm. In other words, you cannot have God's protective through sacrifice and so forth. You have to do away with these things. Therefore, you're in a situation of uh, uh, the tools of cultures, the tools of human society against violence is gone, which is sacrifice. Mm. It's very interesting to read comments on the New Testament in the 20th century because uh, it is like apocalyptic text and it makes the gospel scary and uh, therefore unfit for modern consumption. Mm -hmm. And uh, they are very happy that there is no direct apocalyptic uh, text in John. And uh, in a way, you sense, it would be an exaggeration, but you sense a preference given to John, which I think is due to the lack of a direct apocalyptic description, which is present in the three synoptic Gospels. But your own understanding <coughs> of the word apocalypse, what is revealed? Is it the foundations of our culture, uh, yeah. which are uh, lying and not like God? 
Is it also the revelation of the nature of God? What is revealed in Apocalypse? Yeah, it's and both what in kind the of sense crisis? that the scapegoat phenomenon which will dominate uh, mankind and made mankind uh, peaceful, being understood, becomes totally unavailable. Therefore, the Apocalypse, if you look at the apocalyptic text of the Gospels, and in other, uh, from the point of view of the mimetic theory era of the people who are concerned with the Apocalypse, is that most of the time they don't know much about the New Testament. And they think that the main apocalyptic text is the, the Apocalypse of John, mm. because the word is in the title. And the word is in the title because the title is merely the translation of the first sentence, mm. the Apocalypse mm. of, of John, you know. <clears throat> Whereas in reality, you must uh, understand the presence of uh, scapegoat phenomena. If you uh, really understand, you realize that what the Gospel is talking about is a revelation of the apocalyptic uh, mechanism. Mm. So when this mechanism is revealed, you cannot have any more. Mm. We are in a society which, bad as it is in a certain way, cannot use, cannot have new scapegoat phenomena that would found mm. a community, mm. you see. Mm. And therefore we are deprived of the main defensive tool mm. of the community system, which is its scapegoat mechanism. Your understanding of that concept of apocalypse is interesting because it seems to take away from uh, religious skeptics, the sense which they're fondest of, which is a kind of millenarian sense yeah. of um, uh, kind of end of the world catastrophe, which is the, um, the, the fruit of the wrath of God. That's a fundamentalist yeah. use of that sure. word. Very no, no, it's purely human. Yes. There is no divine intervention. No. Sure. That's why Jesus, the divine intervention is the abridgment if these days had not been abridged. Mm. Therefore, the apocalypse is not a few days, it's an era. I would say it's a modern era. Mm. One should, if these days had not been abridged, no one would have been saved because Christianity would have disappeared completely mm. and the memory of it as mm. well. So you can consider that this abridgment, this abridgment is regarded by Jesus as the work of God. Mm. Yeah, the end will come more quickly than it should naturally. Mm. By definition, these texts were nonsensical because they talk to you about uh, greater peoples in the world and the tumult and storminess of the waters of the ocean. You see what I mean? The two together, the this combination, which sounds totally uh, <coughs> a nightmare, a fairy tale. One of the reasons apocalyptic texts have not been taken seriously in the modern world is that they, are, they seem to be especially untrue, foolish, because they mix nature and culture in the violence, you know. Mm. You, but our world, the, the goal of science is to separate totally, in a way, violence from nature and show it's human. You could say it's one of the goals of uh, science. And in the apocalypse, you have a mixture again. But in the modern world today, as I say in this country, if there is a new cyclone in uh, New Orleans, you don't know what's a part of man and what's a part of nature. Therefore we are back scientifically, because scientists will say yes, we don't know what's uh, in a mixture of the two, mm. which is very surprising because the goal of science is to separate the two. Mm.